So these are some of the things that you should also look out for, right? Now, here is the kicker. It says Florida Supreme Court Justice Renata Francis and Meredith Sasso are also both members of the Federalist Society. The Federalist Society is basically a conservative and libertarian legal group that advocates for the original interpretation of the U.S. Constitution. And a lot of times these will also be the same people that will advocate heavily for corporations against you as workers. So the biggest red block blotch that you see is whenever it says, oh, they're with the Federalist Society. Because they might as well also say they're part of the Heritage Foundation, right? Or they might as well say they're part of some liberal think, think tank as well that also upholds corporations and corporate power. You know, um, when I first did my vote back in 2018, the first time I ever voted, one of the things that I noticed in the ballots was that we also had to vote for judges. I was like, wait, we vote for judges? Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, well, what's the significance of that? Well, it's not just only if you get in trouble. It could be if you're suing. It could be a lawsuit against a person. It could be a lawsuit against a corporation. Um, it could be for many different things. You know, especially when it comes to appealing, you know, either to an appellate court um, or to a Supreme Court, whether it be state Supreme Court or the um, or, you know, it being allowed to go up to the United States Supreme Court. And this is why it's so important. And it also goes into laws being passed and things like that. So I think it's important that we go over looking at the judges when it comes to our ballots, if you do choose to vote and seeing, you know, what you can do in order to know who's the right one to choose, you know, or if you should choose any at all. So let me share an example with you. I'm going to share with you guys the sample ballot for Florida. So you guys can see. So this is the sample ballot. Um, for the 2024 election. So as you can see, here's president and vice president. So there's, you know, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, Jay Sullivan, Claudia De La Cruz, Randall Terry, Peter Sonsky, and Dr. Joe Stein. And then you have a writer. Of course, they will put Dr. Joe Stein way at the bottom, but I digress. One of the things I wanted to go to is here right in the middle where it says Florida Supreme Court. So it says, shall justice... Renata Francis of the Supreme Court be retained in office and you get a yes or a no. And these Supreme Court justices are typically appointed by the governor, right? So you can enlarge so you guys can see. The Supreme Court justices are appointed by the governor, but we can vote to retain them or not. This is something that we can do within the state of Florida. So here it says, Renata, uh, Renata Francis, and then you also have Meredith Sasso, right? You have the choices to retain them or not. And you can look at the Supreme Court, and one of the things I always recommend to people is when researching about the Supreme Court, 
justices or eat or other court justices is to look up their try to look up their rulings if you can or if not there's also good news articles that you can actually get into in order to find out where they stand and that's a really good way of finding that out right so this is out of the pensacola news journal right so it says should Florida Supreme Court Justices Francis Sasso be retained? What to know about them? So this is a good way of finding out your choices and you know whether to retain certain judges or not. So it says a lot of excitement surrounding the Florida ballot in November 5th. General election is gathered around two of six con constitutional amendments. Amendment three, which seeks to legalize weed for recreational purposes, and Amendment four, which would limit government interference regarding abortion rights. Before voters get to those questions on their ballot, they'll be asked whether they believe two Florida Supreme Court justices should retain their seats. Both justices are newly appointed, which means they must run to retain their seats in the general election that occurs more than a year after appointment. So, it says, if they hold their seats, two justices, Renata Francis and Meredith Sasso, would each serve another six-year term. Each of Florida's seven justices were appointed by Republican governor, and both Francis and Sasso were appointed by Governor Ron DeSantis. No Florida judge has ever lost a retention election, according to Ballotpedia. Here's what Florida voters should know about to make an informed choice on whether Justice Francis and Sasso should retain their seats. So this is the information about them. Who appointed them? Well, they were one was appointed by Rick Scott. And they both were appointed by Rick Scott, but then they were appointed by Governor Ron DeSantis. Uh, so it talks about their uh, their history. They're basically their professional bios, where they're from. I didn't know that we had one of our Supreme Court justices is actually from Jamaica. I did not know that we could have a Jamaican judge that is not born here in the United States. But that's what we have. So... It talks about her, where she did her practice as a lawyer, as an attorney. And so here's uh, some things where it would give you pause or it should give you pause if you're more for workers. Not that this is a definite thing, but the fact that she went to uh, Ivy League uh, gives me pause because a lot of times people who typically go to Ivy League is not set in stone, but there tends to be some classism that comes into the fray when it comes to certain people who go to Ivy League. It's not always. For instance, I'll, I'll say people like Brianna Joy Gray is a Harvard-educated lawyer. And she, you know, has class trader proclivities, which, uh, you know, is something that makes me uh, more fond of her, you know, because she sees that, you know, we're all in this together. But some who are educated in the Ivy Leagues, especially, tend to stick with their class, right? So this is why... I pause when, when I hear somebody who went to some base like Brown, Yale, Harvard, Stanford, you know, people like Ron DeSantis actually went to Yale. So let's continue. Uh, and then Here is the thing. It says prior to that, she spent about seven months at Schutz and Bowden, 
where she represented insurance companies and personal injury protection cases. So these are things like this that give me pause, right? It gives me pause because people like her defend the corporations. They're not defending the average Joe like you and me. They're not uh, defense lawyers that, you know, or public defenders that are defending, uh, you know, the little guy. Especially when they have a history of being a lawyer, you know, that litigates for insurance companies, corporations, banks. That's always a, a bad omen, in my view, when it comes to people like this. So says Florida Supreme Court Justice Renata Francis. Um, so her voting record says Francis voted in favor of the state. Francis voted in favor of the state in the April Planned Parenthood versus state case, which a six to one decision upheld Florida's 15 week abortion ban. At the time, Florida was already pushing for even more limited six week abortion ban which is contingent on how the case played out. Florida's six-week abortion ban went into effect on May 1st. So she was one of the judges that was in favor of the abortion ban, meaning that she was in favor of an abortion ban where most women don't realize till at least six weeks that they're pregnant. Uh, executive power says twice since last year, Francis joined the court majority in rejecting efforts by former state attorneys to challenge their suspension by DeSantis from offices, offices, voters elected them to hold. She has also argued for limiting citizens ability to challenge gubernatorial actions in court. So I'm not a big fan of that limiting citizens ability to challenge gubernatorial actions. So we see where she, which side she's on uh, re regarding legalizing weed. Francis and Sasso were lone dissenters in allowing Amendment 3 on the ballot, which seeks to legalize recreational marijuana for adults, meaning they did not want it on the ballot. So that tells you everything you need to know about Renata Francis. Uh, Meredith Sasso, uh, Talks about her. So she began her career in private practice, representing clients in large loss, general liability, auto negligence, and complex commercial claims in state and federal courts in trial on appeal. She also served as guardian at Leadham, representing abused or neglected children. Okay. So, of course, she supported uh, the abortion ban, was against legalizing weed. And here's the thing in, regarding executive power. In June, Sasso agreed with other justices that a 2021 law to crack down on rioters can't be used against people, peaceful protesters. She also shared a junior opinion that upheld the Santa suspension of Orlando area state attorney Monique, Monique Worrell. So Monique Worrell was actually a state attorney that was uh, more progressive, that what that didn't want to prosecute people for crimes like marijuana possession and stuff like that, uh, or drug possession, because she believed it should be more of a... Um, more of a health issue than a crime issue, but apparently people like Ron DeSantis and this judge didn't agree. 
So these are some of the things that you should also look out for, right? Now, here is the kicker. It says Florida Supreme Court Justice Renata Francis and Meredith Sasso are also both members of the Federalist Society. The Federalist Society is basically a conservative and libertarian legal group that advocates for the original interpretation of the U.S. Constitution. And a lot of times, these will also be the same people that will advocate heavily for corporations against you as workers. So the biggest red blot, blotch that you see is whenever it says, oh, they're with the Federalist Society. Because they might as well also say they're part of the Heritage Foundation, right? Or they might as well say they're part of some liberal think, think tank as well that also upholds corporations and corporate power. So when it comes to looking at judges, look out for things like this as well. Now, they'll say, for instance, says the group's founding principles are based on the ideas that states exist to preserve freedom. And that separation of governmental powers is central to U.S. Constitution, according to its website. But it's like, whose freedoms? Because the thing is, like, it's never actually personal freedoms. It's always corporate freedom. The Federalist Society, I don't trust them. Because it's always about corporate freedom. And then when it comes to, if they talk about personal freedom, it's always personal freedom until it's body autonomy. It's always personal freedom until we use our freedom of speech to speak out against corporate overlords and politicians. So then when we want to protest and get out in the streets, oh, we can't because apparently that's against law and order. So this is why when it comes to judges like this, and this also extends to Democrats as well, Democrat appointed judges too, because they will also uh, do the same things. They will also side with the corporations. This is why people like Ketanji Brown Jackson, Elena Kagan and others, I do not trust them as far as I can throw them either because they side with the corporations too. They may just say that they agree with social issues, but what good is it if you side with corporations? So with that being said, um, let me go back to this. And this is something that you can always use as pretty much the measuring rod. Um, for instance, the Sixth District Court of Appeals. Uh, this one talks about the Court of Appeals retention. Uh, and if you look at a lot of these people, they also um, and these are continuing six court of appeals, pretty much every single person in the entire court of appeals that are up for retention are also part of federal, the Federalist Society. So pretty much all these people, I said, no, I was like, hell no, you are not going to be retained. Not, not if I have anything to say about it. And so, and also uh, to Roger, um, when I was doing the constitutional amendment, here's the constitutional amendments for the state, the ballot measures, which I did. Uh, but then here's the county charter amendments that we also voted on as well. And so I made sure to vote on all these. I don't have time to go over them all, but. I also did the county charter amendments as well, which uh, for the most part, most of them are actually were a go because it's actually for the benefit of, uh, you know, citizens and also ask for spending more money on citizens uh, and also giving more power uh, to the citizens as well. So uh, that's one of the things I was also voting for. But when it comes to judges, make sure to do the research on the judges. Look up the judges and see what their rulings are. Look at what groups that they're a part of. Um, 
you know, if it says anything like the Federalist Society or if they have represented, you know, corporations and things like that, you know, pause, you know, um, and also it's also a good rule of thumb. You know, typically they're either going to be appointed by a Democrat or Republican nine times out of 10. You know, I, I try to look for if they were a public defender. I try to look at see if they were a defense attorney, criminal defense. Um, I try to see about their advocacy when it comes to different groups, um, what type of foundations they're part of. Try to look at that because it's kind of hard to look at their rulings because it's a lot of legalese and things like that. But be very careful. Um, and like, I'd say 90% of the time when it comes to just asking about retaining judges, I'm doing no. Even if it was appointed by a Democrat, I don't care because they're going to be with the corporations nine times out of 10. You know, so you, but you got to really study these judges. But I highly recommend you guys also look up the judges before you guys go and vote so that you guys aren't stuck there going, oh my God, uh, I don't know which one do I retain, which one do I keep? You know, if you guys have to vote on judges in your state. So yeah, I want to make sure I got that into. Oh, and by the way, there was a, a half cent sales tax that we were asked either to retain or to get rid of. You best believe I chose to keep that half cent sales tax. Why? Because it goes to our schools. I do not want to defund the schools. I want to defund the police, but not the schools. We're funding the schools. <laughs> so. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.